Hey everybody, welcome to Wither Mode Games. My name is Kenny. Today we are playing Final Girl. If you remember last time, Melanie took on Hans the Butcher at Maple Lane. Um, a lot of you guys like the mix and match, so today we're going to have Barbara take on the Poltergeist at the Sacred Groves. Uh, I'm not going to go over all the rules, but I am going to go around the board because there's a lot going on here. And just give you a brief overview. So we've got our poltergeist over here. Um, the poltergeist does not have any health because it cannot be attacked. Uh, the horror level for the poltergeist starts at 3. This is the poltergeist's basic attacks. So in the turn sequence, we're going to go to the killer's attack, which will be this up here. Um, she will move towards the closest victim, followed by the final girl, and then attack. That movement range and attack damage strength will be based on this bloodlust track. Um, every time a victim is killed, the bloodlust will go up. There will also be events and tarot cards that will cause the bloodlust track to go up. The dark power will get unlocked after about two increases of the bloodlust track. It's going to be some continuous power that's going to affect our gameplay. Um, then we move over to the sacred groves. So the sacred groves comes with this divine wrath which is like the gods doing their thing. And so it adds a additional effects to the bloodlust track, but it also has this divine wrath card um, called atonement. And so there'll be two, two or three possibilities. Either you'll increase or decrease the atonement track, moving it up and down this track, or you'll unleash. And when it says to unleash, it's gonna, you're gonna do that effect. So right now, if there was an Unleash, we would lose two time. Um, if we moved up and there was an Unleash, um, our horror level would go up. Uh, we've got three search locations at the Sacred Groves, denoted by the orange borders. Uh, the Welcome Center has the trash can lid that we can see. Uh, Lost and Found has an old rifle. And the Groundkeeper's Shed has a prayer book. And the prayer book will, when you play Atonement, add one success to your roll. Awesome. And then we've got our setup card, which basically gives the initial layout um, of the location. So our final girl is starting here on the left. We've got some victims at the welcome center, burial grounds. We've got a ton in the center here. Um, and then we've got the killer, in this case the poltergeist, is going to show up in the bottom right corner. Now, in order to defeat the poltergeist, there is a little girl named Carolyn that is hiding in one of the search locations. So we need to go to the search locations, we need to find her, and then we need to escape with her. And that's how we beat the poltergeist. So we're really going to try to focus on going to those search locations. And at the same time, we are going to need to save victims to get stronger. Um, these red locations... I don't remember the name of them, but they're special locations for the Sacred Groves. There's going to be some of the tarot cards and some of the event cards that will reference those locations. All right, moving along to the right, we've got our victim pool, we've got our special victims, uh, we've got our event deck, we've got our tarot deck. So in the turn order, the final girl is going to take all of her actions. Um, then she's going to go to the planning phase, which is all this down here. Then the killer is going to take their action. And then we're going to do the tarot deck. So moving down to the right here, this is where um, dead victims will go. Hopefully that'll stay empty. Highly unlikely, but hopefully. Um, these are some of the uh, tokens that will be used in the game. And then we've got all our final girl's actions. So I've got a ton of zero cost abilities down here. And then at the end of my action phase, however much I can spend however much time I have left to buy additional actions. All the actions I played that turn will not be available during that planning phase. But at the end of the planning phase, they will go back into the market so that I can get them the next phase. Um, per the Sacred Groves, we've added two new action cards, or one action card, two copies of it, called Atonement, which basically allows you to decrease this Divine Wrath track. Um, we've got our six action dice. Um, each die has two successes, two options to discard two cards for success, and then two fails. 
got our play area. Uh, we've got Barbara. So when Barbara saves the victim, just like any other final girl, um, she gets some bonuses. So this one decreases the horror level. We can increase the time by two. We can restore our health. We can take any top item card. That'll be really good. And we can move one space. Once Barbara has saved five victims, she will get her ultimate special ability, which says victims will move into the killer space with you. So normally victims will not, when you move, a victim will go with you unless it's into a killer space. In that case, the victim will not move with you. When you damage an enemy in your space, you may do an additional damage for each victim present. For each additional damage done, a victim is killed. Do not increase bloodlust for victims killed in this way. So she can do extra damage at the sacrifice of victims. Which isn't, uh, it's bad and it isn't bad. It's not increasing the bloodlust, but we're losing victims. Um, the special ability will not come into play a lot because we cannot attack the poltergeist. But the poltergeist may summon other things that can be attacked. And then for each additional victim saved, uh, we restore one time. All right, her health is seven. There's six tokens and one special token. That special token on the bottom of it either has zero to three health. So if we ever lose enough HP to trigger that token, we'll flip it over and see if the final girl has a little bit left in her or if the poltergeist finished her off. And then we've got the horror track. So the horror track will determine how many dice we can roll per action. So obviously we want to get into the green. Once you get into the red, you're only rolling one die. Anything additional from that is going to increase the bloodlust track. So there's another way to increase the bloodlust track. All right, so that's a general overview. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I get all my zero cost abilities to start. So I've got a couple walks, a couple focuses, weak attack, and a short rest. So right off the bat, my weak attack and short rest is going to be fodder for successes because uh, I won't be attacking anything and I'm at full HP. So the walks and the focus will be very important. So first what I want to do is walk into this welcome center. I'm going to play walk and I'm going to roll my two dice. Uh, if I get two successes, I get to move up, two spa up to two spaces uh, for one time. I get one success, I can move up to one space for one time. If I fail, I can move up to one space, lose a health, and lose two time, or I can just lose two time. So, I'm going to get rid of my weak attack and short rest to turn this four into a success, which will allow me to move up to one space and lose one time. Now I'm going to walk again. What I want to do is get this victim out and then move back into that space. Use my remaining time to get a search. So I can search that location, the welcome center, next time. Two fails. So I will go ahead and lose the health. I'll lose two time. And I'll move one space. So I've rescued this victim. And I will put it on the move one space to go back to the welcome center. Now, I could focus, and I think I am going to do use one of the focuses. If I fail completely, I'll lose two time. Or I can discard the focus to gain one time. So then I can get a search and a sprint next time. Or two searches. We're going to discard the focus to get one time. All right, so that is the end of my action phase. After the action phase, I'm going to go to the planning phase. So I have four time to spend. I'm going to get a search. Should I just get two searches? I'm going to get two searches. All right, let's see. Take the top two item cards at your space and choose one. Place the other on top face up or underneath face down. One success takes... Take the top item card at your space. 
fail, take the top item card at your space, increase the horror level by two, and lose two time. So I guess what I'm trying to decide now is do I go with two searches, or do I go with one search and two close calls? Because the close call will allow me to reroll any one die, or spend two time to reroll all of the dice. We're going to go with two searches. We're going to go with one search and two close calls. Because I can use the close calls as cards to discard to get the success. Whereas if I get two searches, I'll be discarding one of them. I can only do that once. So now the cards I used will go back into the market. Have the cards I discarded and used. I have no movement right now, but I will get my walks back next turn. So after the planning phase, we set the time back to six. We turn action cards in, discard pile the tableau. During the killer phase, resolve the killer action. So Poltergeist has two movement, one damage. So it will track the nearest victim. So one, two, one, two, three. Oh, so, so it's actually one, two, three, one, two, three. So in, in these cases where it's even, the rules say, you know, do what you think the actual poltergeist would do. This person is pretty far off, so we're going to go one, two, and get closer to the group. And then attack. There's nobody in their space to attack. And I 100% forgot to flip over the event card at the beginning of the game. Roll a die and place the hollowed ground token on the burial ground, sacred shrine, or holy groves, depending on what I roll. So there's the burial ground, the sacred shrine, and the holy groves. I got a four, which is the sacred shrine down here. That says anytime you end the action phase on that space, gain two time. Okay? So it didn't impact gameplay, thank goodness. Um, so that was the Poltergeist. So now we're going to go to the Terror card. Which says, if I can climb on top of that statue, I can get a killer selfie. Right. Increase Divine Wrath by number of victims at those red locations. Sacred locations. So that is two. So this is going to go up two, one, two. Oh no, and then it says Unleash. Discard one random action card. See, if I only had the two searches in that focus, I would have been... That would have hurt. I mean, I could still lose my one search, which would slow me down tremendously. All right, I lost a close call. It was fodder anyways. Place two new victims at the burial grounds. All right. All victims adjacent to the burial grounds move there. What? All victims adjacent to the burial grounds move there. That is everybody. Because these guys are all adjacent. So that's six. This guy is adjacent. And these three are adjacent. Look at all the victims at the burial grounds. 10. That is wild. Okay. Uh, panic phase. If a victim was killed this turn, panic all victims in the killer space. No one was killed and nobody's in the killer space. Upkeep phase. Reveal finale if no terror cards are left and rearrange items. So this terror deck is a, a uh, counter on the timer on the game as well. So once that runs out and we get to that phase, we're going to flip over the top part of the killer, which will be an even more powerful um, action that it can take. So we're going to do a search. And see what we can find at the Welcome Center. Oh, it'd be really nice if I just got two successes off the bat. I got one success. 
See, if I use close call, it'd be a waste because I may not get the success. I should just discard the two cards. So I'm going to do that to turn this four into a success. And now I can take the top two item cards at your space and choose one. Place the other face up or underneath face down. We are at the welcome center. So we're going to grab these two. There's only um, four items per location. Oh, and we got the trash can lid in the map. We did not find Carolyn yet. So the trash can lid has three charges to ignore damage. And then the map discard during the action phase and then for each deck of item cards do one of the following if the top card is face down turn it face up if the top card is face up you may discard it from the game and turn the next card face up i think we're going to do that so we're going to keep the map the trash can lid is going to go to the bottom of this deck then we're going to discard the map For each deck of item cards. If the top card is face up, face down, turn it face up. So we're gonna turn this one. Alright, that is the out of order signs. If the top card is face up, you may discard it from the game and turn the next card face up. And we're gonna do that because we gotta find Carolyn. So the old rifle is gone from the game. It's not coming back. And the next card is first aid kit. All right, we're kind of thinning the deck down. We're going to get rid of the prayer book and hopes for Carolyn. Energy drink. Okay. None of that was what we wanted, but we've taken three cards out of the deck, and we know which the last card at the bottom of the first one is. Or three, three cards out of the location stacks. And we know what the bottom of the last one is. So that was a good overall turn. Um, so that search cost me one time. And now we're going to move on to the planning phase. So these are gone. I've got five to spend. So I get all my uh, zero costs, and it costs zero. And then I'm going to get another search. That's two, one, two. Uh, now the problem is I have three to spend. But I do have walk, so maybe I don't need the sprint. I'm going to go with improvise. Because improvise says two successes. Until this action phase ends, all threes and fours are successes. One success says for the next horror roll only, all threes and fours are successes. See so that or I can lower my horror level. Let's do that instead. Let's go with the distraction to lower horror level. So two successes, reduce horror level by two and gain two time. One success, lower horror level by one and gain one time. No success, decrease horror level by one and lose four time. Or increase horror level and lose two time. None of those at the end there sound good. So we put the search back. Close call, close call, and my zero cost focus. All right, so that is final girl's turn. Killer resolved the killer action. So she's going to move two spaces. She only needed to move one. And she is going to slash this victim. Our first victim is down. And that increases the bloodlust. And that increases the horror level by one. All right. Now we're going to go to the terror deck. And it says, the ground is shaking. Place the poltergeist in your space. Uh-oh. Maybe I should have saved that trash can. Then she's going to attack someone in her space, prioritizing uh, victims first and then the final girl. Well, it's just me. So I'm going to take two damage. 
There are guard cards, but I don't have any of them. I have no way to fight back. So I'm just going to straight up take two damage. If you take any damage, all of your moves during the next action phase are panicked. Wow. Okay. Wow. So I don't know that I explained panic. So what that means is there are numbers at the exit points on all these locations. And when the victims panic, you roll a die for each victim. And depending on the number, you're going to run in that direction. So what this tarot card is saying is if I use anything like a sprint or a walk to move, instead of moving the space I want to go to, I need to roll the die and that'll determine where I go. Because I am scared and I am running like crazy. All right, panic phase. If a victim was killed this turn, panic all victims in the killer space. All right, not, that doesn't apply. Upkeep phase, reveal finale. No finale because we still got tarot cards. All right. So the first thing we're going to try to do is a distraction. We need to get our horror level down. Two successes. So horror level goes down two. Time goes up two. That was an amazing roll. All right. Now we're going to do a search. Oh, wait a minute. So we're at the welcome center. Yeah, so I can finish my search at the welcome center and just call it good. Let me see what the out of order sign says. For one time, place or retrieve an out of order token in a connection between your space and an adjacent one. Victims will not pass through unless they are following you. Nice. That could keep them from panicking to a certain location. So I know the bottom of that at the Welcome Center. There's only one card there, and I should just go ahead and search it while I'm here. All right, I got one success and one fail. So the one success is just take the top item card at your space. And I can't do anything to improve it. So I will get the out of order sign. It goes in my backpack. I cannot flip the top card of the next stack. Um, so the problem is I have to move because the killer is in my, the poltergeist is in my space. Problem is I can't control where I'm going. Um, I am going to take a short rest. See if I can recover some health. One success. I'm going to get rid of focus and weak attack. To turn this three into a success. For two successes so I can recover two health. All right. I've got two walks. I need to start staggering my walks. Because if I use all my walks now and I don't have enough to buy a sprint... Well, that I'm not moving anywhere. I have to get two successes to get far away enough from the poltergeist. So here comes my first walk. Well, I have to, I have to succeed on walking twice because this poltergeist moves two spaces. All right, I got one success. I don't have enough cards to discard in order to turn that three into a success. So I got one success, which is move up to one space for one time. But I can't control where I'm going. That means I might not go anywhere. Because let's see, that's a five to six will go south, two to four will go north. Wow, two to four. Okay, so I am going to move at least. Yeah, because if I roll the one, oh, I would go... Back to the entrance. So this one includes all of them. Some of the spaces don't include all of them. Um, if there's no number there, then you just don't move anywhere. So, yeah, and I'm just kind of moving. I'm trying to decide whether I should move again. But I should just save my walk because the ground is shaken may end up sending me back into the space with the killer. 
So we're going to we're going to hang on to our final walk. And we're going to go to the planning phase. We've got 7 to spend. Actually, let me think about something here. For one time, place or retrieve an out of order token on a connection between your space and another. Why would I want to do that? Victims will not pass through unless they are following you. Maybe I can I mean, they're all in the same space. I kind of want them to disperse. You know, we're going to go ahead and use the out of order sign to do that. So in case there's some terror or event that causes victims to panic, they're not going to run towards me. I blocked off the road. And that cost me one time. So I got six time. I get my focus back. Let's go with my walk. I'm going to get a sprint for two time. And this is where I'm going to start staggering them. So I want to walk and I want to sprint. Um, I want to get a search. No, I don't want to search. I'm going to get a guard for two time. Um, I didn't get a search because I'm not going to reach any location where I can search. Which means I should just get another sprint. Yeah. Oh, we also had a good distraction, but distraction costs three. Or we can get two close calls. Let's get two close calls so we can have fodder. Failed rolls, semi failed rolls. All right, zero cost cards go back here, search goes here, distraction goes there. All right, Poultry Guys, we'll move into my space and attack me for two. I am going to play my guard. Let's see if I can, even one success will reduce the damage by two. And I got two successes, so I ignored all the damage. So now that's not. Uh, we're going to go to the terror phase. Oh, man. No one will notice if I break off one of these pretty branches. Increase the divine wrath by the number of victims at those red spaces. That's basically to 10, because there's 10 victims at the burial ground. Oh no! Because <laughs> then it says unleash, discard all action cards except atonement. I forgot about atonement. But I wasn't worried about it because I was still all the way down here. And decrease divine wrath by the number of cards discarded. One, two, three, four, five. That basically skips my entire next turn. Then it says, place two new victims at the Holy Groves. All victims adjacent to the Holy Groves move there. This guy's technically adjacent. Oh man. So that's my entire turn gone. So there's no panic. And there's no finale card. So now it's back to my turn. And I literally cannot do anything. Guard will just was used to go to the discard. But I do have six time. So I will get all of my zero or the zero cost cards back. I'm going to go ahead and purchase a guard for two. I'm going to purchase a sprint for two. And then I got to purchase an atonement for two. All right, we're going to put a guard back here, two close calls, sprint, and focus and walk on my zero costs. I turn my time back to six, and the poltergeist is going to attack me again. So I'm going to try to guard again. I got one success, which is all I needed because it reduces damage by two. And she's only attacking for two. We're doing pretty good at keeping her bloodlust down. But man, that divine wrath at the sacred groves is really slowing me down. So now let's go to the terror. 
Did that clown just move? A clown doll appears. You may play action cards that inflict damage if you wish. Then, if the clown doll is still alive, you take damage equal to the killer's attack value. You may defend as normal. If you take damage, increase the bloodlust. The clown doll disappears. Alright, well. I do have a weak attack. I need at least one success to deal some da one damage, because he's only got one HP to avoid taking two damage. I got the one success. It'll deal the damage, but I'll lose one HP. So we defeated the clown. All right, there's no panic phase. There's no victims there. And we're not at the finale for the tarot cards. All right. Now what I want to do is I need to sprint. I need to just run. I am not going to be running far. So because it's a sprint, I can at least move two spaces if I discard two cards to gain one success. Or I can discard my last two cards and run three spaces. Let's see, I've got one, two, three. But I also have a walk. Yeah, so we discarded two for the one success. So I'll lose one time and move two spaces. I do need to get the victim farther away from... No, she's going to go in there anyways, but if she starts killing things in there, that bloodlust is going to skyrocket. I have to find Carolyn as fast as possible. So let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five spaces to get up there. One, two, three spaces, four spaces to get the lost and found. We're going to go down. We're going to go south. One, two. And then we're going to try to walk. And hope we can get two successes. One success. Move one space for one time. Which is not bad, because when I end my turn there, I'm going to get two, uh, two time. And then I am going to try to do atonement to lower that divine wrath. Nothing. No successes. Horror level goes up by one and I lose two time, which basically negates the time I was going to gain there. Awesome. So I'll gain my two time. We'll go to the planning phase. I'll get my focus and my walk. I've got four time to spend. Um, I don't think I need the guard, so I want the sprint, and I want the search for four time total. That takes me to zero. Back up the six time. Put the atonement back. Zero costs. That there. I didn't. I don't think. I don't think I'll need the guard. All right. So things are about to get real now, because. Poltergeist is going to the space with 10 victims. They're going to panic. So this is, we're going to have a really big panic phase here. So there she goes. But they cannot run out there. So as long as we don't get a 3 on the panic roll. So she kills a victim. The bloodlust goes up. And now that's going to re... I forgot to activate this during the first bloodlust. That's okay, because we never activated any, any of the other ones. So yeah, when I went up the bloodlust the first time, I should have increased this by 2. But we never had to activate it. The next time, it went all the way up to 10. So, dark power. Invisible barrier. You may not enter a exit with Carolyn unless you have full health. Wow, okay. Okay, that's going to be tough. All right, now we're going to go to the tarot card. More Divine Wrath. Let me just carve my initials right here. Increase atonement by number of victims 
at the red spaces, which is going to be all the way again. Unleash, which is going to discard all my cards again. So that's four. That's four cards gone. To decrease this by four. Place two new victims at the sacred shrine, which is where I am. All victims adjacent to the sacred shrine move there, and there are none. We're going to lose another turn. That poltergeist is going to take out more people. And then we're going to unleash again, so my horror level is going to go up. This is, this is starting to go downhill. Uh, actually, well, yeah, they're going to panic. We're going to enter the panic phase. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. We're just going to roll six right now. So anything that's a three, like these two, will not go anywhere. They will not cross over that way. So we've got a four to the north there, five that way, and a six that way. And one and two is going to stay. So we got a one here. So three victims are going to move. So four, we'll go up here, five, we'll go right here, a six will go to the center. Three of them didn't move, so there's three left. And four, five, six again. So it looks like they ran off in pairs. But we've still got some at the burial ground, which is not, which is not good. I have no actions, so, which is going to unleash. Yeah, so as long as I don't get the increase it by the number of victims there, I'm good. So I ended my turn at that same location with the hollowed ground. So I got eight time. So I'm going to get all my zero costs. Um, I need to incre decrease my horror level. So I'm going to get a distract distraction by three, four, three. I'm going to get a sprint for two. And I got three left. I'm going to get atonement for two. And then I'm going to get a close call for one. All right. Because now we're back to the killer phase. And the killer is going to kill someone in their space. Blood lust will go up. No killer events, or no killer bonuses, but it's going to unleash, which is going to increase the horror level by two. Then we're going to go to a terror card. The shadows are closing in. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. There are a lot of victims on the board. Increase horror level by two. We are in the red, which means we're only going to be rolling one die. Uh, she's going to target the closest victim, move, and then attack. There's somebody in her space, so she's just going to attack the person in her space. And, yeah, so horror level goes up by two. Which is basically move the bloodlust up. But I also have this increased by number of victims. Okay, so yeah, this is going to go back up to 10. The bloodlust is going to go up 2, and then it's going to unleash, which causes me to discard all my action cards again, except atonement. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, except for atonement. So this is going to go down to 1. So it's, it's a reset. I lost nine cards. And my horror level is at one. 
Okay, we're not out of the game yet, I don't think. So the one victim in there is going to panic. I'm going to go to the five, which is up here. Um, we're going to swap this token here for the sacred shrine. This token is just basically, there's too many uh, meeples on this space, so that token kind of helps you save some space. All right, we're not at the finale. I'm just going to play my, back to the final girl plays, I'm going to play my atonement, which there's no point because I can't go below one and I'm already at one. So I'll end my action phase, I'll gain two times, so I'm up to eight. Let me not put these back yet. So I'm going to get sprint. And a distraction, that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I do want to search. So one, two, and then a close call. Okay, reset my time. These are my cards. Restock. Zero, 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 zero. And that's it. That's my action phase. Or that's my planning phase. Killer phase. So now the killer moves three spaces and does two damage. Oh, but there's... There is uh, victims in its space. No, there are no victims in its space. So where is it going to move? Where is she going to move? To the space with the most victims. Now she does two damage. That's not one damage to... Two victims, it's just two damage to one victim. Victims only have one HP. So that victim's down. Horror level is going to increase, so that's just going to push that up to the maximum. So now she's going to move four spaces and deal three damage. Increase Divine Wrath by number of victims at the red spaces. So now that's only three. And Unleash. One, two, three. Discard one random action card. And it's going to be the sprint. That's going to destroy our turn again. Because I needed to move to this lost and found to start searching. I've been at the same space. This I've been at the sacred shrine for a while now. And we haven't even flipped the tarot card. Everything was flying around. Increase horror level by one, which increases the bloodlust. I take a damage and discard the next tarot card. So now she's just accelerating the game. Place the poltergeist with the closest victim or in your space if there are no victims. And then she killed another victim causes the bloodlust to trigger, so I take another damage and discard another tarot card. There's one tarot card left. One. Um, they're the victim in the space, so they will panic. At a two. So they will go up here with their... They ran away together with another group. Two of those people died, so they run up to the other group, and it's like, don't come to us, you're just bringing the, bringing the ghosts with you. Um, so that was the panic phase. We are not at the reveal finale yet. Now we are to the final girl phase, where I would have gotten a turn, but I cannot do anything with these cards. That's not true. I'm going to do a distraction. Oh. Let me redo that, because I can only roll one die. And discard close call and search. Oh wait, that's, no, that sprint was randomly. To turn that into a success, this means I decrease the horror level by one and increase time by one. And then we're just going to play this atonement. Got one success, so I can decrease this by one, which is really not what we wanted. 
I think I'd rather discard a card than increase my horror level and only roll one die. But I'm at the Sacred Shrine. Still wear the Hollow Ground, so one, two, so I have nine. Let's get rid of these two cards, so I'm going to get all my zero costs back. Maximum number of cards I can have in my hand is ten. I've got six, and I've got nine to play with. So I'm going to get a long rest for five, because I need health. One, two, three, four, five. Um, they're not with me, so I'm guarding, so i got to get a search. All right, because I got rid of my search. Yep, that's two. And then, what have I got? Two walks. I wish I had another search. I'm going to get another sprint. I don't have to use it. Six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, we'll save the sprint. We'll get another atonement. All right. Back up the six. Atonement goes over here. Distraction goes up here. Search goes here. Close call. And sprint. So we got the walks, and we only need to walk one space. Now it is the killer's phase, or the poltergeist, and it's going to go towards the space with the most victims. And it's going to kill one, which increases the bloodlust, which basically says I take a damage. Oh man, discard the next tarot cards. There's no more tarot cards. If Carolyn is not with you, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, shuffle Carolyn into the item deck of the nearest location. Do not reveal the top card of that location. Ooh, so I would have lost Carolyn if I had her. Which means it's going to skip the tarot cards, which is good. I can't believe <laughs> running out of tarot cards is actually working to my benefit right now. Or is it? If the finale is triggered, take the Sacred Groves finale token and place it on top of the Divine Wrath and then increase Wrath by one as indicated on the token. That is not good. So we're going to skip the draw tarot card. Uh, victims will panic. So there's two in there. One and a five. So one will go this way and the five, three to six will go that way. All right. That's the panic phase. So now it says reveal finale if no tarot cards left. There are no tarot cards left. So we're going to reveal her finale. And it says... Place the poltergeist in your space and then attack. So it's going to follow me around. All zero action cards now cost one. So I'm not going to get those back for free. And then we got to add this up here. So I'm not going to be free of this. And then it says unleash and then increase by one. No, oh, after the killer action is completed. Okay. Because that would have increased my horror by one. I don't need to do that right now. All right, final girl turn. Um, let's go ahead and do a focus. Well, let's do the long rest first. That's the most important thing. One success, I don't have a close call to change it. So I will get three health back, it's actually quite a bit, and lose two time, down to four. Um, 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 let's do a walk. And then I get rid of 
two cards. I'm not going to need to walk again. And I can pick up a sprint next time. So let's get rid of a walk and a weak attack to turn one of these into a success. So for one time, I will move one space, lost and found. Now I'm going to do a search. One success at least. And then I'm going to get rid of short rest and a focus. Change the other into a success. I am not lost and found, so I get to look at the top card and the next card under it. Mysterious Pills. Discard this during the action phase and choose one of the following. Reduce the horror level by one, or gain two health. First aid kit. Every time you use an action card to recover health, recover an additional health. Oh man. So I'm going to get one of these. There's only one card left at this location too. So it's either I get the health continuously or I get the two health now. I feel like I should get the health continuously. So I'm going to drop this underneath the stack here. And now I have the first aid kit. I still got a focus and an atonement left. So let's go ahead and use my focus. Not enough to turn into a success. Um, let me see. So that card says unleash and then increase it by one. So we are going to play our atonement now. Hope we can lower it a little bit so we don't increase our horror level. We got one success, so we're going to decrease it by one. Which means we're going to have to keep getting that card back. So we have a problem. I only have three time to spend during the planning phase. And my zero cost costs one now, but I have no zero costs. So what's going to happen here? Place the poltergeist in your space and then attack. You're going to deal three damage. I have five health. So I can take at least one damage. I mean, I can get attacked at least once. I could get a guard card. I only have three, though, and I need to do a search. And my long rest is not available. As long as she's coming at me, the bloodlust is not going to go up. But I have to be at full health to get out with Carolyn. Which is almost impossible. How do I... She's going to keep... Oh, it needs to, she needs to go to a place where... I need to go to a place where there's a victim. So that she'll actually attack the victim and not me. I gotta get the search. I gotta search that stack one more time and see if I can find Carolyn. So atonement goes here. Cause that costs two and then a close call. My third, that takes that back up to six. Um, search goes here. Long rest. And these guys. All right. So yeah, she's just gonna come Pop right up next to me and then deal three damage to me. Then she's going to unleash and reduce my time by two and then increase this by one. The worst thing about that is now my zero cost cards cost one. So she decreased my time. I mean, that was kind of my fault. I chose that over losing the horror level. Um, no victims to panic, and she's already at her finale. So, okay, well, 
I'm going to search this location. That is bad, so I'm going to use my close call. Spend two time to so reroll all my dice. <laughs> Not looking good. I got one success for the search, which means I take the top item card at my space, which is this, and it is the War Club. Whenever you inflict damage with the War Club, choose Divine Wrath and decrease it by damage inflicted. Not good, because I can't attack the poltergeist. And now I only have one time to spend. Does that, does that mean Carolyn is at Groundkeeper's Shed? I have one time to spend, and I gotta spend it on a walk. So close call goes back, search goes back. Killer's already in my space, is going to hit me for three. So that takes out my last health. So we're going to flip over this health token and hope that I have a little bit of health left. And three. I got three health. Awesome. Whew. Awesome. So I just bought myself like one more round, right? Um, unleash, so horror level goes there, and I'm rolling one. I increase this by one. I'm still not in a good space, and I don't think place, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out of this. But we gotta keep trying. So my one action is to walk. If I can get up into that space with those guys. I'll get to move one space. Oh, so I can at least go to this shrine. That's not a bad. Move up to one space and lose one time. All right, and because I'm at the hollowed ground, this goes up by two, so I have seven time to spend. So I have to get a walk for one time. I should have only rolled one die. Let me walk that back before it's too late. I should have only rolled one die because my horror level. It will be the difference between taking damage and losing two time. If I don't get a success. All right, I got the same success. So boom, boom. All right. So now we'll buy the walk for, uh, we go in at the seven, buy the walk for one. I've got a sprint. So I'm gonna get two sprints. Well, she's gonna teleport to my space. This would be two, four, six if I got a guard. As long as I end my space where a victim is. But there are no victims up at the top there. So even if I got a full sprint, I'd move three spaces, one, two, three, not enough to get to the groundkeeper's shed. So I definitely need two sprints and a search, but that would be all my time. And she's just going to go to my space and attack me. In other words, I need to play the long game. Let's get a sprint for two time. Let's get a long rest for f five. I guess we'll get a short rest for one time. And then I need a distraction for the remaining three. Yeah, I'm gonna take a damage here too. Walk gets reset. All right, so killer action. Place the poltergeist in your space. Attack, it's going to hit one of the victims there. 
blood loss will go up. Now, so this actually goes over here. Blood loss will go up, so I'll take a damage and discard a terror card, but there are none. And then the victims are going to panic. One and four. So four will send one to the lost ground. That's it. It's only three, four, five, six. So we can get rid of this token and put the one victim here. Boy, we are crowding up that space. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is a distraction. And I need a five or a six. A three. I can't forego the short rest. I can forego the sprint and the walk so that I can do a short rest. Or just lose four time. But then I won't have any actions next turn because my zero costs cost one. If I would lose four times, I'd drop me down to two. Or I do that. See, that's going to unleash, which is going to cause me to discard one random action card. I may not have any, so I can't afford any. That's still another round gone. That one victim will get killed, and then she'll attack me, and I will be done. So I need to use the short rest. But I need to slowly make my way up there, but the sacred ground might give me two time. But again, there's no point, because it's going to cause me to discard a random action card. So... We are going to just take the miss, reduce the horror level by one, and lose four time. So then we can do a short rest. Two dice. One success, which would give us one health, but because we have the first aid kit, we'll get two health. And then lose one time. And then we're going to attempt to... Oh, we can take victims with us. So let's sprint. I'm going to count that as a five, a success. Uh, it's yeah, let me re-roll it. Ah, oh, well, success. I need all the successes I can get. Uh, so I can move two spaces. So I'm going to take this victim with me, and I can carry up the two with me. So then I'm going to take these two up here with me. And then we're going to activate walk. Oh, wait. I lost the four. One, two, three. Yeah, and then the short rest. Oh, the short rest is what costs one. And this costs one. So I'll walk. And it'll just automatically end my turn. All right, I at least got one success. Move up to one space. I'm going to take these two with me. Oh, I can take them to the exit. What will that do for me? Take any top item card. That'd basically be a free search. I know what this card is. The energy drink is not going to do anything for me. Except move me one space. So I can get a health back. 
and I can get I already know I'm not going to have any time because that's going to cause me to discard a card. But I don't want to save both because I need them to be attacked instead of me taking the three damage. What is this game? What is it causing me to, this, these decisions I have to make? I can't just do one. I take them to the exit, so yeah, we're going to go here. Yeah, because I can only take one attack. I'm not going to have enough time to buy a guard, so that's it. Planning phase, I have no time to spend. That goes up to six. Killer phase, it's gonna take out one of these victims. Now teleport to me. Take out a victim, bloodlust goes up, so I'll take a damage. And then that victim will panic. Three. Uh, so it will go to the exit. Oh man, that's the end for me. No, because I'll have six time. Now this will go up. Yeah, discard one random action card and then this will go up. And I have no action cards to discard. Because I didn't buy any during the planning phase. At the part of the planning phase, these cards will go back. Short rest. Zero. Distraction. Then we go to my turn. I have no cards. My time will still be six. So I have six time to spend. I have to do guard for two. So I have to get a sprint for two. And then I have to search. All right, that's my planning phase. Time goes back up to six. Killer is gonna attack me for three. So I will use my guard. Nothing. Reduced damage by one, so I'll just take two damage. So I didn't, I didn't die. You see, she would have done three damage. So if I didn't get guard at all, I would have been done for. No victims to panic. Oh, first she's going to unleash, so I'm going to lose four time. And then increase this by one. That's going to be the killer right there. Increasing the horror level, so I'm only rolling one die. Actually, I think I'm done for. Because even if I sprint, search, she's going to attack me next turn. I'm not going to have any time to buy a guard. Because all of these are going to cost time. But let's play it out. So we're going to sprint. And not even make it. I did not make it because... I'm going to lose time. I'm going to lose the, my last health, whether I move the space or not. So Barbara has fallen. This poltergeist is scary. Invisible barrier, the combination of things. So, you know, this poltergeist at the sacred groves was really, really tough because the sacred groves of divine wrath was really hurting me. I think that was probably two or three turns where I discarded my entire hand. It was crazy, but that's maybe Melanie will come back from Maple Lane and take on the poltergeist herself. I would hope that all the victims at the Sacred Grove ran away and never went back again, but it's a horror movie, so they probably will go back. Um, I hope you guys will be back, and I will be back with another final girl. Thanks.